say thank you all for coming out. Um, it means a lot that you're here and listening to me present something that I worked really hard on. That's really important to me. So my project that I researched for Springboard is on the Latino achievement gap, or the general um, disparities in education between um, Latino students and their white counterparts um, in test scores, graduation rates, and just general educational progress. And I have a short video. I want to show you that um, the place I work at every summer makes us watch. Uh, it's like two minutes. <laughs> Let's look at two children, one from a middle-income family, the other from one of the millions of low-income American families. As the two kids head off to kindergarten, look what happens. The middle-income child starts out with a six-month lead. The low-income child is already falling behind because of a lack of access to early reading and preschool education. During their year in kindergarten, in the same school and classroom, the two children will learn at about the same rate, so we'll move them both forward nine months. But look what happens in that first summer between kindergarten and first grade. Our middle-income child moves ahead about a month in reading because learning of one kind or another continues over the summer. The low-income child falls back about two months so when school begins again, when they go back for first grade, the gap between them has already widened. During first grade, again, they move ahead at about the same rate, another nine months. That next summer, the activities and lifestyle of the middle-income family keep that child moving forward, but the low-income child has fewer opportunities to reinforce good habits like reading, and that child falls farther behind. Then we come to second grade, and again, our two children learn at the same rate. But the summer after second grade sets our low-income child back again, and our middle-income child moves forward again, and the gap widens again. By just the third grade, the two children are already far apart. By the end of fifth grade, the gap between the children is two and a half to three years. It will keep growing through middle school. So you see, without addressing what's happening during the summer, it is impossible to ever catch up. It's impossible to close the gap. No matter how much high-quality learning goes on from September to June, every year the gap widens. Um, so this is kind of like a little intro on the behind the achievement gap is why do some students do so well and other students never overcome grades of code for their parents' income level? Why can't schools work out for that? I'll talk a lot about that later. So out of all the different topics I could have chosen on our education. them up from what they've learned in the school year and also to try them to get them ahead for the next upcoming school year. Um, all the kids in my particular class are first or second generation students from Central and South American countries. Um, I chose the topic because of my kids. Um, my kids are incredibly bright, intelligent, and hilarious, but when I think about um, myself and my friends at their age, um, I realize that there's a definite difference in terms of the education I received and the education that my kids at Horizons have received. There's this one girl in our class named Emma, who's nine years old and has absolutely no concept of time. Um, she doesn't know whether 30 minutes is larger than an hour, she doesn't know how to tell time, she has no idea how many minutes are in an hour. Um, 
Um, I think I spent at least 10 minutes going back and forth with her going, 75, 9, 128, she has absolutely no idea. And when I asked her why she doesn't know how to tell time for the answer an hour, um, she told me that um, at home her mom works two jobs, so she's really only there at like 8 or 9 o'clock at night. And so it's essentially either only Emma or her and her 14-year-old brother, Jason. And so she learned it in school, but then she doesn't do her homework at home, and so then she can't actually practice it. Um, two other kids in my class, Dominic and Luis, have the highest math scores in our entire class. Um, but they're really aggressive, and when they're upset, they kind of tend to like lash out against other students and teachers, and will have temper tantrums and things like that. Um, the main teacher in our class asked them, talk to them as to why this happens and like why they're always really angry. Um, and Dominic said that it's because at home he has two older brothers and they're always teaching him bad words and always fighting and so then his response when he gets upset is to get angry and lash out because that's what he does at home. Um, another kid in our class, Marcos, um, has ADD and can't see the board at all even if he's sitting right there. Um, but he can't get glasses or medication because his parents just can't afford that. Um, when I think back on my experience and my friends' experiences at school in D.C., um, and I thought about my kids, I realized how fortunate I was to just have all these opportunities and have had all of these things handed to me in terms of school. And I realized that obstacles that kids like Emma and Dominic and Luis and Marcos and all my other kids um, have to face on a daily basis impact their lives and their performance in school and on homework, and then I wondered why that was. So today I'm only going to be talking about the specific Latino um, white achievement gap. However, the overall racial achievement gap refers to any educational disparities between different genders, socioeconomic classes, or uh, racial or ethnic groups. Um, for example, black and Hispanic students are more likely to have lower test scores, lower graduation rates, um, and are just less likely to go to college and graduate from college than their um, white and Asian student counterparts. Uh, in most cases, the racial achievement gap starts uh, when the kids are young, so like beginning of kindergarten, um, and just continues to widen as they grow up, unless there's necessary intervention and programming uh, that the kids get to help them catch up. Um, and then, just to clarify, um, just because there's an achievement gap doesn't mean that um, the white and Asian students are continuously progressing rapidly and all the other ethnic groups are kind of just staying the same. Um, all of the ethnic groups are progressing in school and educational-wise um, at the same rate, or not at the same rate, sorry, they're just in general, but some are progressing faster than others, which is why the gap exists. So one of the reasons um, why the specific achievement gap is so important is that currently Hispanics are the fastest growing segment of the U.S. population. Um, according to the census, the Hispanic population increased by 58% in 10 years, from 2 million people in 1992-35 million in 2000. In 2010, the Census Bureau estimated the number of Hispanics to be about 50.5 million, which is 16% of the entire U.S. population. And by 2020, minority racial groups will make up the majority population of the United States. So the future of virtually our contributors, our leaders, our teachers, are going to be kids from these um, minority ethnic groups. Oh, also, in 1990, the average fourth grade math scores for white children were 19 points higher than those of Hispanic students. And in 2007, that gap increased uh, to a difference of 21 points. For math scores, the gap between white and Hispanic students increased from 24 points in 1990 to 26 points in 2007. Um, another problem with the achievement gap is essentially the cycle of poverty and the perpetuation of lower achievement levels in school from generation to generation. So a student grows up in, pro in poverty with parents or single parents uh, that can provide the necessary extra resources or just aren't in the home uh, when the child comes back from school. And then uh, the child starts falling behind in school because they don't have anyone like, kind of supporting them at home and they can't have extra tutoring, things like that. And so they fall farther and farther behind and then they never truly catch up to the rest of their class and their grade nationally. Um, and then um, some kids end up dropping out or don't finish high school, which then uh, makes it very difficult for them when they're older to try to find specialized jobs because they never earned like, a high school diploma or a college degree, things like that. And then um, they grow up and they end up living in poverty as adults, and then when they have children, their children live in poverty, and the cycle kind of just 
repeats itself over and over again. Um, another reason the achievement gap is a problem because is because besides the obvious um, educational disparities, um, it's an equity gap and it perpetuates middle to upper class families and lifestyles and resources as kind of like the norm. And then um, all these other students who are from like lower socioeconomic backgrounds and families um, are kind of put in a box and like shoved aside and labeled as like not normal or different. Um, the obviously the achievement gap is built and kind of backed by um, educational and academic inequality, but that's also backed in places um, back to overall racial inequality in our society. Um, it shows the amount of privilege um, that upper and middle class families have in the U.S. and in the world in general, um, because the gaps show how different aspects of these children who are negatively impacted by the achievement gap in their lives, um, usually their home situations um, and their familial situations, which happen like by no fault of the kid. Um, uh, negatively affect their education and the type of education they receive, which affects their future. Um, so when I was thinking about possible solutions, uh, I realized most people only think about kids from 8 to 4 when they're at school. Uh, and I realized that that was a mistake they're making and that um, teachers and educators and just people in general really need to start thinking about kids not only when they're in school but also when they're at home and what they do at home. Um, so how can we try to resolve this problem? Um, address the whole life of the child, not just their life at school. So when I was at home over break, I visited Bancroft Elementary, which is a school in DC that um, most of the kids from Horizons go to. Um, it's grades it's kindergarten through sixth. Um, and it's a bilingual school where the majority of the students there are either African American or Hispanic. So I sat in on classes different age groups, second grade, third grade, fifth grade, um, and I spoke to the principal about the achievement gap and what he's noticed in his children and how it's affected them in their school. Um, he said that the problem doesn't necessarily lie within the schools, um, and that the schools teach the students what they need to know at a given grade level. Um, the problem lies in the lack of resources that these students have once they leave the classroom and in their home um, that causes them to not be on track with the rest of the and also he knows that the problem normally is rooted in something deeper, whether it's socioeconomical, um, familial, racial, um, and particularly in terms of the achievement gap, it's the students left at home and this um, situation in which that they were born into. Um, according to the U.S. Department of Education, Latino students were more likely to be born into situations um, that were associated with below average academic performance, uh, for example, the lack of two parents in the home, lack of parents that have received any type of higher education past high school or having received a high school degree, um, poor English skills, things like that. Um, and so, um, then I wrote a study that said, um, which I found really interesting, that said um, students of color, particularly Latino students, tend to suffer more from chronic stress, um, from trauma or issues in the home, um, than their more affluent counterparts. Um, and it says the stress negatively affects the child's um, physical, physiological, and kind of emotional well-being um, and their brain development, and it can that can manifest itself into behavioral and academical problems at school. Um, and it said that stress in the home um, disrupts kind of the child's like ability to um, connect normally to people and to focus in school, um, and that chronic stress um, affects like, memory. Um, creativity and like overall motivation and effort and things like that. Um, and so if the child has like kind of an unhealthy social and academical life at, at school, then typically the teachers will kind of write the child off as like them being unruly um, and that they don't actually want to learn. When in fact that it's not there that they don't want to learn, it's just like certain circumstances are affecting your life um, that way. So at the end of my project, um, I had to think of an action project, something that I could potentially do to try to resolve or fix the problem. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so um, I had to try to think of something um, I could do to potentially like resolve or try to fix the problem that I addressed. Um, however, the Latino achievement gap and the achievement gap in general is incredibly <coughs> complex and has been um, a problem for many years, and I, as a 19-year-old, I can't pour millions of dollars into schools and programming and teachers uh, to try to kind of eliminate or help to eliminate that gap. Um, 
So since I couldn't simply solve it and help to solve it until I actually become a teacher after college, which is what I want to do, um, I instead wanted to think of problems um, that affect the achievement gap and think of possible solutions. So as I noticed through my work at Horizons and my visit and my uh, talk with the principal at Bancroft, uh, many families don't have the financial means to provide extra after school tutoring or summer tutoring programs, things like that, to their children. Um, and as you saw in the video and as I read, um, during summer most students lose about two months of grade level math and reading skills. And this is why many students are falling behind because they're not only losing skills that they learned the past year, but they're also not making up for those um, during the three crucial months of time, just extra time in between school years. Um, while their more affluent counterparts are like um, usually going to programs, summer camps, things like that, doing out of classroom experiences. Um, so this is why I think personally more after school tutoring should be offered by schools and more importantly in the summer, um, programs either offered by schools or free programs like Horizons, um, which are funded by sponsors, donors, and the government that can help students from low income families who are negatively affected by the achievement gap actually have an opportunity um, to keep learning throughout the summer as opposed to constantly being set back um, every nine months. And my idea of a solution um, would be for schools um, before the school year starts like in the summer to have training and preparation um, so they become aware of students in their school and their possible home situations, um, whether they're from high stress home situations or not. Um, because I think the schools and educators really need to know where their students are coming from and be prepared to make their school a more supportive, supportive learning environment for their kids. So for my final statement, I'm going to go back to my kids from Horizons because I love them. Um, my kids are incredible and a few of them have told me um, that they want to go to places like Harvard and they want to be professional athletes and vets and lawyers. Um, and I think it's incredible because they're only nine years old. Um, and although that's a long way away, I think that with extra effort put into outside school learning uh, programs and opportunities, we can bridge the gap and allow these insanely smart kids that love learning who just happen to be from poor backgrounds um, by no fault of their own finally come on the same footing and be able to perform at their highest potential. Um, we have this quote uh, that I read or that I saw in an interesting article, I mean, sorry, video of um, professionals in either teaching or who work in the U.S. Department of Education on the achievement gap. So, the achievement gap is that you, as a white middle class person, has to run 26.2 miles, the Latino student has to run 30 miles, the black student who grew up in poverty for a single mom has to run 35 miles. That's really the achievement gap. What's happening is that nobody is showing up at the starting line equal, and somehow at the end of the marathon is a college graduation or a great career, while the rest will have to make up 10 miles. So this essentially kind of sums up my whole presentation on the Jimmy Gap and the basis of how we need to solve it. Because in my opinion, you'll never really have true educational quality if you have some kids starting out 10 levels below uh, other kids, because no matter, even if they end up at the same kind of level, the kids who are 10 levels below still have to go through all these other hardships and obstacles um, that the other kids who are 10 levels above them don't have to. Um, and in order to have equality, you need to start out kids in the same level, the same footing, so that they have equal opportunities. These are sources I used. Um, so that concludes my presentation. Um, I just want to say thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Springboard, Ms. Howley, Ms. Dyson. You're awesome. Um, so thank you for listening. I really appreciate it. We have time for like only like two or three minutes worth of questions for Sarah right now. <laughs> um, did you at all do any research into year-round schools and does that help close the achievement gap when there's no summer break or not? Um, I did not do any research, but I mean personally I think that it would just if you have year-round schools because then kids are constantly learning and they don't have like the crucial three month gap where they're not learning anything. So I think that's really helpful. Yeah. Um, just a suggestion. Have you heard anything about the research that's come out recently and shows that affluent and reasonably affluent kids by age five have heard more than a million more words? Yeah, we, yeah, we went okay. over that in uh, the yeah. Yeah, really well. um, Did you do any research into uh, the use of different ways of teaching that could address? perhaps the learning differences that uh, could also be influences on negative test performance, which is often where they're seeing the gaps? Um, no, I did not. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so you've had a really good experience with your summers. When you're in college, maybe do you have an interest in uh, exploring other types of uh, uh, experiences with different kind of groups potentially, or do you want you to stick with that that place and, and go with it? Um, well, I'm doing horizons um, back home again this summer for six weeks, and then um, I'm going to UVA next year, and they have this program called Madison House, which is essentially I'm not totally sure as to what kind of like demographic the kids are, but um, I think you go and you work at like a local um, like little elementary public school with kids. Um, so regardless, like I plan on working with kids, and like I'm majoring in um, elementary education and psychology, because so I'm going to be an elementary school teacher. Um, so I plan on doing something with kids for the rest of my time. Um, I just want to say your presentation was extremely inspiring to me, and these topics are very dear to my heart. And so, and I really appreciate your passion and your energy that you personally extended to spend okay. your summers these different programs. And so, I'm curious about what you think it takes to spread your kind of passion and energy to other teenagers, kids your age, to have awareness about these programs so that they too can get involved and really make a difference at this time of your life. Um, I'm I'm not completely sure. Honestly, like I think people just need to realize that like there's different at least people my age and that like, there's different types of kids with different needs depending on like who they are and where they grew up. And I think that like people need to realize that like even though like some people think they're like, oh six weeks out of my summer, like I'm working with kids, it's exhausting. Like, they need to realize like it might be exhausting, but that like the reward and like what the kids get out of it is like more important than like actual like the physical like, work you put in. I think they need to realize that like, the kids end up benefiting so much more than you actually think that they would. So. Yeah. Does um, Horizons keep track of the kids beyond the program? Yeah, so they're every year, um, at least the chapter um, that I work at, because we just started, I think, like six years ago, mm -hmm. so they add a new grade like every year. So this year they're adding seventh grade, um, and it only goes to, I think, ninth grade. Uh, but then, yeah, they like track like where the kids go to school and everything, okay. and they have to keep track of them. And then a lot of the kids end up, once they're like in high school or out of college, they'll like come back and like work at city councils and things like that. So, yeah. Do you think that our country is making positive or negative strides towards these, either, you know, not only reducing the gap, but providing more of these after school and summer opportunities? Um, I think we're making the positive changes, obviously not super quickly, but I definitely think that we're trying. But I think the part that our country needs to work on is more of like the racial aspect of it. I mean, like we can attempt to solve like the different educational disparities, but I think that overall we need to work on the fact that like the racial part where it's like certain uh, ethnic groups and like this, uh, their status, like socioeconomic and class status are viewed as like lower than others. I think that's the part that our country needs to work on as a whole. Cool. All right. Well, awesome. Sarah, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, thank you.